I'm very excited um, this morning. As many of you might know, Ron Ritter has semi-retired, I guess. I'm not sure what you call it. He'll talk to you a little bit about it. But he said, I'm not doing any agronomy days. I'm like, oh, Ron, we really need you. My farmers love um, to listen to you, and he always has such really good information. So he called me last Friday, and he said, Jenny, I'll come. He said, I just love the Queen Anne's County group. So he's here today um, to talk. So, Ron, if you want to come on up, he's going to give us an update on um, our usual weed and herbicide control. Thanks, Ron. Jenny is right. I am. I retired July the 1st. It was primarily a financial move on my part. Took two months off. Actually, I worked for two months for free and then came back uh, September 1 part-time. Now, 2011 was actually a very interesting year for me because not only did I kind of semi-retire, that's me and that's my grandson. My daughter decided to uh, give me a grandson, and they actually named him Ronson, son of Ron. So I was, I was, I'm honored, Jenny. <laughs> but, but I'll tell you guys, I've been watching this kid one day a week uh, for full time. If you haven't fed a baby and changed his diaper as many times as you have to and do some laundry, by the time that day's over, I am absolutely exhausted, okay? Absolutely exhausted. So... That was, uh, like I said, it was kind of a big year for me for 2011. I think another thing for 2011 which really impacted a lot of you is some of the legislation that came out. Many of you may or may not know about some of the things that came out in 2011. There was House Bill 659 and Senate Bill 582. If you weren't familiar with them, basically the House Bill will prohibit the use, distribution, and sale of atrazine. The other bill, the Senate bill, was a, to study the feasibility of prohibiting the use, distribution, and sale of atrazine. Now, as far as I know, we have not seen anything introduced in 2012, but I'll tell you what, 2011 should have put up a red flag for many of you. Because when you think about atrazine, what, what has atrazine in it? Or maybe I should say, what doesn't have atrazine in it? Are you familiar with these products? How many of you guys have used Bicep or Lexar or Lumax in the past? I mean, everything we use in corn pretty much has atrazine in it. So uh, we need to be aware of what's going on in Annapolis if we're going to maintain uh, some of these products. Now, back uh, almost uh, 10 or 11 years ago, Sagenta did come out with something called Kmix. It was a blend of Dual and Callisto. That's the same year Lumax came out. I know there's a lot of you using Lumax or maybe switching uh, to Lexar. <coughs> and what we're going to see in 2012. Is Mark Whalen here? Mark, are you going to be selling any Zmax? Uh, not, not, not here. It's in the Midwest. Okay, okay. Eventually, if we are looking at something from the standpoint of losing atrazine, Sagenta will be coming out with a product called Z-Max. It's going to replace K-Mix. It's basically a blend of Dual and Callisto. So there are areas of the country, uh, Wisconsin, I believe, maybe Michigan, where uh, atrazine is actually uh, limited in terms of its use. So one new product. Now, what I want to do is kind of run through the different companies, some of the different things which are coming out. I'm going to incorporate some different weeds, some things you should be looking at, uh, basically taking these products alphabetically from BASF down to uh, Syngenta. Many of you probably have heard of Kixor or the Kixor line of products. Uh, there's four different ones out there. I'm only going to mention three of them. One of the ones I'm sure some of you have used, maybe not so much in corn, but maybe in soybeans, is a product called Sharpen. Um, it's older chemistry, we call PPO chemistry. If you've used something like Blazer or Reflex, that's the kind of chemistry. Uh, early pre-plant or pre-in corn, looking two to three ounces, very low use rate, and of course, no fear of carryover. What are we looking at? The key thing with Sharpen is early pre-plant applications if you've got glyphosate-resistant mare's tail. Uh, a lot of people used it last year, a lot of success with it in soybeans. Uh, the other thing it brings to the table, pre-emergence activity of pigweed, lamb's quarters, ragweed, jimson weed, velvet leaf. Not sure about morning glories, probably going to still what? Need a little bit extra atrazine in there with it. 
They do have a blend. Uh, initially came out as a product called Integrity. They now call it Verdict. It's got both Sharpen and Outlook. If you're not familiar with Outlook, Outlook's, it's a grass product. It's like a dual. It's like a lasso. It's like a harness, okay? So like I said, you've got your broadleaf product in here, and you've got your grass product. Much higher rates for corn, 10 to 18 ounces. Uh, a little bit lower rates for soybeans, and we'll come back to soybeans in a few minutes. This is some of our work down at the Y on Shredded. You can see the preponderance of, we've got everything in there, cockleburr, velvet leaf, ragweed. Here's sharpened with prowl. I could have been sharpened with dual, sharpened with lasso, sharpened with harness. And here's verdict, the blend of outlook plus sharpened. Now, we've been looking at a product, it's, it's been coated, it comes from a, a Japanese company called Kumiai. Uh, we've been looking at a, a code name, KIH-485, they finally have given it a name. They're going to be calling this new product Zidua. Why Zidua? Because it gives you residual control. Right now we're looking 2013 for corn and in, in, uh, soybeans, probably 2014 for wheat. Now, what is Zidua bringing to the table? Um, first of all, we've looked at it in wheat for Italian ryegrass control, and I'll tell you, this product looks absolutely super for Italian ryegrass. Corn and soybeans, a lot of your grasses, a number of broadleaf weeds out there. Uh, the problem we have right now is that there is an 18-month recrop except for labeled crops. So, you've probably heard about a product called Fierce, and we'll mention that one again, uh, labeled for corn. However, you're going, to be, you're going to be limited to a corn, corn rotation. So, they're trying to get some of these things ironed out by 2013, but you will see a product out there called Zidua. All right, any Sure Start users? It's a product from Dow. Uh, Monsanto makes the same thing under the trade name Triple Flex. What is it? It's a blend of Surpass, Stinger, and Python. Okay, Surpass, Stinger, and Python. Uh, very low use rates here, about a pint and a half. Uh, they're primarily gearing this for Roundup Ready corn. You get it like a four, maybe six weeks of uh, pre-emergence activity. And you'll notice down here, if you're putting out a pint in, in three quarters, you're getting a pint of Surpass, two and a half ounces of Stinger, and a half ounce of Python. Not a lot of stuff in here, but like I said, if you're looking for something cheap, you're running Roundup Ready corn, you want a little grass, a little broadleaf activity, uh, either this product called Sure Start or the one from Monsanto called Triple Flex uh, is an opportunity. Now, in 2013, Dow is hoping to introduce what they're going to be calling the Enlist Weed Control System. We're going to be seeing tolerance to a new 2,4-D. What we're going to have in the, the corn and, and eventually the soybeans, they're going to be stacked with resistance to not only 2,4-D but uh, glyphosate as well. And what they'll be selling will be a product called Enlist Duo. Enlist Duo. This is a blend of 2,4-D and glyphosate. Okay, 2,4-D and glyphosate. Once again, it's going to be called the Enlist Weed Control System. And they're hoping to see uh, some of this available maybe by 2013, 2015 for soybeans. Now, anybody ever use 2,4-D? Does it always stay where it's supposed to stay? No, I know. Now, this new formulation is less volatile. Don't get me wrong. It is less volatile. But does the wind ever blow on the eastern shore? Or maybe, like, does it ever not blow on the eastern shore? Uh, if this thing's going to move by wind, and you got some pumpkins or some tomatoes or some grapes, or you got a housing community with all their, you know, their McMansions, Hey, 240 is going to move, folks, so we, we're going to have to be a little bit cautious in, in using this particular system. DuPont has their, their different Q products out there. The one they'll be pushing the most is this one here called Realm Q. It's a mixture of Matrix, Callisto, and has a safener in it uh, as a, as a post-emergent type uh, program. Uh, one other change with DuPont. Are there any basis users out here? There's got to be a couple of you guys have used basis in the past. Uh, basis blend will actually be replacing the old basis. Okay, it's called basis blend. You'll notice your use rates, your old basis here at a third to a half ounce, and we're now looking at eight tenths 
to one and a quarter ounces of product per acre. Uh, corn, you know, probably on the low end on your light soils, uh, probably about a, a one and a quarter ounces on your medium type soils. Uh, once again, if you have a crop failure, you want to come back with soybeans. We're looking here at a 60 day recrop. 30 days if you got STS soybeans, but if you use this lower rate, then we're looking at a 15 day recrop for soybeans. So once again, basis is out, basis blend is what's in. FMC, any cadet users? Got to be a few of you out there. I like this product. Why do I like it? Because it's a tremendous morning glory product. It's something you can add to glyphosate, your touchdown, your roundup, whatever your glyphosate choice is. And think about it, you can not only use it in corn, you can use it in soybeans. You don't have to wash anything out. If you've got morning glories in corn, you can hit them. You can take that same spray tank going to beans and hit them. And look at this wide window of application. Corns, two leaf corn up to 48 inches tall and soybeans from your first trifolia through full flowering. Full flowering. Your use rates are relatively low. Uh, we're looking here probably about a half ounce of product if you're going to run it with glyphosate. You can also use it with Liberty. Here's touchdown. It could have been roundup. It could have been whatever. This is all morning glory. Okay, that's all morning glory in there. And here's touchdown with cadet, half ounce of cadet. Look how clean that is. Let's back up. Touchdown alone, touchdown with cadet. And it's relatively cheap for that half ounce of product. And like I said, a little hard to see probably. See these green things in here? This is a shot of touchdown. We, we didn't catch it, the morning glories. Came in here with cadet and started to take out the morning glories. So like I said, you can spray that corn. Don't have to clean out. You can run over the beans and hit them as well. Like I said, it's kind of a, a unique product. Now, I mentioned Zidua from BASF. Both uh, FMC as well as Valent are going to have their own Zidua, but they can't sell it by itself. They have to kind of put it together with something. What you'll see in 2013 is a product called Anthem. It's a blend of Zidua and Cadet. They'll also have Anthem ATZ, which has the Zidua the cadet and the atrazine in there with it. All right, let's move into Syngenta. Gramoxone Intian is out, folks, if you haven't heard. What's out there is pretty much what's going to be uh, uh, sold out. Uh, we're replacing it now with Gramoxone SL. Uh, what happened here is the alginates in it, the stuff that used to make you have to go barf, it's no longer in there. So if you want to go ahead and kill yourself, we got a great product here. Carmoxone SL. Same two pound AI per gallon. Okay, same two pound. And trust me, <laughs> I don't know. And Mark, I know you're back there. I'm, I'm hoping this thing says don't drink it. Skull, does it have skull and crossbones? Uh, yes, it does. Okay, tremendous. All right, we've talked about Halix, a product from Syngenta for a number of years now. Uh, what are we talking about here with Halix? It's a blend. You've got dual in it. You get 24 ounces of touchdown high tech and you get three ounces of Callisto. So you get one, two, three modes of chemistry. Uh, where this works really well, I mean, it works in conventional till, works in no till. Uh, those of you that are no tilling, you're going out early with your Princep 24D, you got your early pre plant base. Plant your corn, plant your Roundup Ready corn. You've got a wide window then to come back and hit it with the, with the Halix. Untreated. Down at the Y. Here's Halix at four pints. And like I said, when you could take a jungle like this and clean it up with three and a half to four pints of something like this, you've done a pretty darn good job. My preference, though, is to run atrazine in there with it, okay? Why? Primarily for morning glory control, okay? Morning glory control. You got that extra pint in there to help take that late season morning glory pressure out, uh, plus the atrazine helps as a, as a knockdown type product. Like I said, here's, uh, here's Roundup, late season. Look at, the, look at this garbage coming in there. 
You know, Roundup has no residual, as you know. What you see is what you get. Right next to it, late season, here's Halix and Atrazine. So like I said, the, the two together are pretty much a, a, a perfect marriage. All right, the HPPD inhibitors. We mentioned Callisto is one of the components of Lexar and Lumax. Uh, we also see it in Halix. Impact's been around now for two or three years for AMVAC, but guess what? We're going to see Impact now sold from BASF under the trade name of Armazon. Armazon. It's the same exact thing. What happened? Actually, BASF had Impact initially. They kind of licensed it out to AMVAC to sell, and now starting in, in 2012, both AMVAC as well as BASF will be selling the product. Two different trade names, one's called Impact, one's called Armazon. And I will have to throw out, if you grow in sweet corn, these products are labeled post-emergent for sweet corn. Lastly, we've got two from beer, uh, one named Laudis and one named Caprino. For the most part, when you look at uh, grass activity with these products, the Impact or Armazon are our strongest products, okay? They're our strongest products for grass control uh, as well as broadleaf control. It does a nice job on a, on a number of our broadleaf weeds. Now, I do want to point out one thing. Probably not so much here, Jenny, but I know there's areas a little further east of here where we're starting to see more and more Texas panicum come in. Okay, I've been in parts of uh, Wooster, Wicomico. It's starting to become quite the plague. If you've never seen this thing, you don't want to see it. If you thought crabgrass was bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. This thing is quite aggressive, quite vigorous. Like I said, it almost looks like a crabgrass, but um, tre tremendous seed producer. will constantly germinate until uh, just basically you get your first frost. And the only reason I'm mentioning it, <clears throat> as I said, the impact in the Armazon provide uh, uh, best control of your grasses. Laudus Caprino in the middle, Callisto probably the least. However, with this product, Caprino does a tremendous job in both fall panicum as well as Texas panicum as a post product, okay? Like I said, I'll repeat it, this product Caprino, while it's not that good on a lot of your other grasses, if you're starting to get some uh, Texas Panicum in, does a good to excellent job. All right, so where are we at as far as our resistant weeds go? Uh, as of January of this year, 372 different biotypes, 201 species, 116 dicots, 85 monocots. A lot of resistant stuff out there. And the, the crazy thing about it, there's a pigweed out in, in the Midwest that eventually we're going to see, because we're so lucky, <clears throat> it's called water hemp. This thing has now been confirmed as being resistant to five different classes of herbicides. Your triazines, your PPO products, glyphosate, ALS inhibitors, your HPPD inhibitors. I don't know what these guys are going to do out there outside of cultivating or going out and physically pulling. I've actually seen pictures where this stuff is so intense in the Midwest, they've actually sent teams of kids out there to pull this stuff up because nothing can kill it. It's scary. And when you think of Roundup or Roundup Ready Crops, which came in in, in 1996, the first case of resistance was, was horseweed. Four years later, today we've got five countries in 20 states with horseweed resistance. That's how far this thing has spread over the past 10 years. And look at your progression here. Um, 21 weeds resistant. Look at this time period here. We only found two. The next five years, we're up to seven. The next five years, 11. What's the next five years going to bring? You know, we went two to seven to 11. Who knows? It's probably the next five years we'll see 20 or more weeds shown resistance. And the funny thing about it, when I was first looking at Roundup Ready crops going back 100 years ago, there was a lady from Mount Santa said to me, she says, Ron, we will never, she said, I repeat, we will never see weeds resistant to Roundup. And I turned around and laughed, folks. I, I turned around and laughed. I said, lady, you ain't seen nothing yet. 
And the problem we have right now, these are different spots in the U.S. with, with glyphosate-resistant weeds. As I mentioned, here in the, in the Midwest, they got this water hemp. Down here, they got something called Palmer amaranth. Both are pigweeds. Both are coming into our area. And I'm, and I'm going to mention Palmer uh, when I get into the soybeans. Mare's tail is probably our, our number one pest right now. I, I know most of you are familiar with this guy. I've showed this before. This is basically some greenhouse work. Uh, no Roundup, quarter Roundup, 10 quarts of Roundup. Uh, if you haven't figured out how to kill it with Roundup, I, I've mentioned this before, save your jugs and just beat the crap out of them, OK? It's the only way Roundup's going to work. So what can we do? We're going to talk about Liberty Link soybeans here in a minute. But you know, this is Agronomy 101. Crop rotation, chemical rotation. Uh, as I say here, I prefer Gramoxone 2,4-D early or Liberty as your burn down. We've got first rate, but that's fallen pretty much by the wayside. My last bowl is save your glyphosate, save your Roundup, save your touchdown for that in-crop application. And guess what? We still need 2,4-D. Yep, it's been around 60 years, still need it today. Imagine that. Now, I mentioned first rate as a backup tool. Um, they've actually increased the rate from three tenths up to six tenths. That's if you can afford it. Um, as I say, it's the only product that provides some post activity. But let me go down to the last bullet. We now have pockets of glyphosate slash ALS resistant mare's tail. What does that mean? That means this product no longer works. I've seen field after field where they've tried to put first rate out. It made them yell, it kind of ticked them off, but it didn't kill them. First rate, for the most part, is not going to be working pretty much uh, on most of our fields now. We have Sharpen. I mentioned this in corn. This product is available not only for corn, but for soybeans, pre-plant and pre at an ounce per acre. The only problem with soybeans is that if you've got coarse soils, Less than 2% organic matter are looking 30 days pre-plant, okay? 30 days pre-plant. Verdict is also labeled. Once again, it's that blend of Sharpen and Outlook. The problem is your use rates for corn are much higher than they are for soybeans. We're looking five ounces per acre for soybeans. We also have a blend called Optil. It's a blend of Sharpen and Pursuit. Two ounces, early pre planter pre. Once again, coarse soils. Less than 2% organic matter, 30 days pre plant. And then lastly, you'll also be seeing a product called Optil Pro. It's a pre pack or a co pack, excuse me, of Optil. You get a, you got a container of Optil and a container of Outlook. Um, basically, why bother? They're looking at outlook for that late season pigweed control. And we'll talk about that here in a couple of minutes. Untreated, this is down at the Y. You can see the mare's tail. Here's Sharpen at an ounce. We, this was actually put out uh, about 14 days pre-plant. These are uh, silt loam soils, 2% organic matter. Once again, here's your Sharpen, two weeks pre-plant versus where we didn't. Here's your Roundup, Court, it's maybe a little hard to see, but there's a lot of mare's tail in there. Your Roundup versus your Sharpen, you can see the mare's tail in there. Now, if you're going to get Sharpen to work, particularly as a burn down product, you've got to be like Betty Crocker, okay? What do I mean by Betty Crocker? You've got to put the right ingredients in. If you don't put the right ingredients in, that cake's going to look like garbage. It's going to fall apart. Same thing with weeds. If you don't get the right recipe, you're not going to get adequate control. An adjuvant's required for optimum burn down activity. You need a methylated seed oil plus either ammonium sulfate or, or uh, urea ammonium nitrate, UAN. If you don't have these things put together, Sharpen will be a complete failure. Once again, you've got your Sharpen, you've got your MSO, and you've got your, my preference actually is ammonium sulfate. And I can't stress this enough. 
Soybeans are a little bit more sensitive to this product than corn. And like I said, if you're, if you're running an ounce, <clears throat> it's 30 days pre-plant on coarse soils with less than 2% organic matter, okay? They actually have a one and a half ounce use rate. There, they've got a 40 day pre-plant restriction. All right, it's gotta be a few Liberty Link soybean users out there. Uh, I like this one, particularly as a product of choice where you've got Roundup resistant weeds. Untreated, here's Roundup, two shots of Roundup. You can see we stunted them, certainly didn't kill them. Once again, untreated, here's two shots of Roundup. And here we put down Roundup as a burn down, didn't do a thing to the mare's tail. And then we came back with Liberty. See these, all these dead things in here? These are a mare's tail that were probably knee high at time of application. We're talking 15, 16, some things pushing 18 inches in height, provided you get adequate control. Uh, Liberty can be a tremendous product of choice. Once again, your Roundup versus your Liberty. Now, the Liberty Link soybeans are extremely tolerant to this product. Uh, here's 22 ounces followed by 22. Here, actually, just to say, if I overlap, and I put 44 out followed by 44, what happened? Absolutely nothing. These beans are extremely tolerant to this product. Now, I do have to mention one thing, and this is what's kind of puzzling. Uh, when we think about Liberty Link soybeans, we, we did have Liberty herbicide when we were talking about Liberty Link corn. They then came in and they said, well, let's change the formulation, let's change the name. Uh, the past year or so, we had Ignite 280. Well, guess what? 2012, we're back to Liberty herbicide, okay? Now, a couple things. First of all, if you're going to use it, use it in crop or as a burn down and not both. Why? Same thing with Roundup. We were using it as a burn down. We we're using it in crop, Roundup after Roundup after Roundup. The weed said, hey, I like Roundup. The same thing can happen with Liberty. So like I said, use it either in crop or as a burn down. Your burn down use rate here is a little bit higher than your in crop use rate, 29 versus 22. One last thing, and it's not on this slide, is coverage. With Liberty, I like to see a minimum of 15 gallons per acre. If you're running some of those 8, 10, 12 gallons per acre, you may not get adequate coverage, folks. I like to see 15 gallons per acre to get adequate coverage. Now, um, here's five different varieties of pigweed. Okay, five different varieties of pigweed. You didn't know we had that many, did you? Most of you are familiar with red, red roots got, has kind of a really compact seed head. And of course we call it red root because when you take it out of the ground, the root actually looks red. Most of you probably have smooth pigweed. Uh, it's not as compact. It's a much more uh, wide, uh, well, actually that seed head can run 8, 10, maybe 12 inches. Uh, let me back up. Like I said, the red root's really compact. The smooth, much broader. And then we've got one coming in called Palmer Amaranth. If you've seen a pigweed plant that puts up this big stalk here, see these big stalks? You probably have Palmer Amaranth, which is a pigweed that's coming in from the south. Why do I even mention this Palmer Amaranth? This thing is a real pain in the butt down south. Why is that? Because it's resistant to Roundup. It's resistant to a lot of the ALS type things. Uh, and uh, we're not certain, okay, we're not certain, but some of the Palmer coming in here to Maryland, we've, I've seen it, there's pockets of it. Uh, is it resistant or not to Roundup or Touchdown or whatever your glyphosate is? We don't know yet. I'm hoping to get some plots out. Any of you guys have any of this something that looks like this, do me a favor. Tell Jenny, Jenny will get hold of me and we'll get some plot work out this coming summer, okay? 
And then the one that's in the Midwest working its way here, it's called tall water hemp. A lot different seed head than the other ones I've been showing. So like I said, let me go back. Here's Palmer, smooth. Here's red root, like I said, very compact. The smooth, these things are kind of compact, but like I said, this thing runs maybe 8, 10, 12 inches. Your Palmer, which has this high, right, this thing right here in the middle, kind of like a middle finger. I didn't say that. And then water hemp, which is much more branched out than we've seen like with this smooth pigweed. And even the leaf configurations, like here's water hemp, much more compared to the red root pigweeds. Like I said, even the leaves are, are, are a lot different. Now, concerns. Whoopsie. First of all, if we're talking about corn, if you think you've got palmer, you think you've got red root, you think you've got whatever it is, uh, when we look at our pre-emergence products, if you've been running Lumax or Lexar or Basis or the new Basis blend, it's not an issue. We've seen basically 100% control. Uh, if, you're, if you do have it and it comes out and you're not sure what to put on a post-emergent, well, guess what? 2,4-D and Banville or Clarity or Status do pretty much a pretty good job right now, okay? So like I said, I'm not worried about corn. Where we have some issues that are in soybeans, I'm going to throw a, a number of different scenarios out there. First of all, there is a product called Sonic. It's a blend of first rate and authority. And actually, uh, FMC has the same thing called authority first. Three ounces when it's followed by glyphosate. And the reason why I'm even mentioning Sonic, if you've got coarse soils, if you're afraid of using canopy, you've had injury problems, I've never seen an injury problem with Sonic. Untreated. And here's Dual and Sonic. Yes, Sonic is a broadleaf product, so you've got to marry some grass product with it, or if you just want to run it down by itself and then come back with your, your glyphosate. We have a product called Sequence, which has been around now for a number of years. Um, what are we getting here? Two and a half pints. We're getting 22 ounces of touchdown and a pint of Dual. Uh, why even mention it once again? If we can get something in there to give us that late season control of pigweed, that late season control of grasses, that late season control of yellow nut sedge, dual would be a product of choice. Shot early and even late season, like I said, you can see the dead carcasses, late season, we've got that residual control. Syngenta also has a product called Flexstar. It's a blend of touchdown and reflex. The reflex is in there once again. If you've got some problems with, you see some pigweed coming in. You see some morning glories coming in. You see some small velvet leaf coming in. Once again, here's touchdown. You can see the, the missing morning glories. And here's Flexstar, where we actually took out the morning glories because of the reflex that's in there. A little bit higher rate. <clears throat> Warrant is another product that Monsanto is touting. If you've ever used acetochlor, you're not sure what is acetochlor. Have you ever used Harness or Harness Extra or Surpass? Okay. Warrant is nothing more than a encapsulated harness. How's that? Uh, they're looking at it post and soybeans. Why, once again, for that late season pigweed control, that late season grass control? Touchdown, I think I went, am I going the right way? Okay, here's Roundup and Warrant. Now, the thing I've seen with Warrant is that if you want to ding your beans, here's a great soybean dinger. A little hard to see, but see these kind of crinkled, cup-looking leaves? Uh, that's not from Banville or 24 d Drift. That's from the Warrant. I think I got one more slider. Yeah. See right in here, see this crinkling, a little bit of a cupping in here? That's from the warrant. Uh, I saw a field where a guy had actually used, this is 50 acres of soybean sprayed warrant. The whole field looked like that. So like I said, uh, it, it will ding your soybeans, but if you're looking for something that late season control, it could be a product of choice. And then I mentioned Fierce. You'll be seeing ads for a product called Fierce saying that they have a label. They actually do have a label. This product's from Valent. 
It's a mixture of Valor. None of you guys, have, I'm sure, have used Valor. And guess what? It's got that Zidua product in there. Uh, right now, it's uh, seven days pre-plant for corn. They do not have a soybean label, okay? They do not have a soybean label. That being the case, you're looking at corn after corn after corn at, at the uh, short haul. They're hoping to get their soybean label down the road, uh, probably not till later in the year, but you will be hearing about this product called Fierce. It's fierce on your weeds. Other trends, uh, the Roundup Ready to Yield, a lot of the beans that are out there are the second generation. Uh, they're talking about that 7 to 11% yield advantage. And what we're going to see is this second generation is going to be stacked with dicamba tolerance. And we'll be seeing, <clears throat> now I'm, I'm going to show you a couple pictures here in a minute. And then I mentioned in less duo, that should be D-U-O, the 2,4-D Roundup Ready corn in, in 2013 and soybeans 2015. All right, this is down the Y. Uh, we had some dicamba tolerant soybeans last year. Uh, what we're looking at here is Roundup and Clarity, a pint of Clarity, two weeks pre-plant. Came in here with the beans, didn't see any problems. We also looked at dicamba as a early post product over top of soybeans. What regularly would happen to soybeans if you put Banville on them? They, they, they would either die, they pretty, look pretty crappy, right? We came in here with a pint of clarity, saw absolutely no injury whatsoever, okay? So like I said, it's going to be interesting technology. I go back to my comments on 2,4-D. If you're spraying clarity and the wind's blowing, is clarity going to stay put? Uh, no. If it's 95 degrees, 90% 90 humidity, will this product volatilize? Yes. So like I said, I, I'm, I'm, it's great technology, a lot of good things about it, but I'm, I've got a few question marks in, in my mind. And then like I said, uh, in 2013 for corn, we'll see the, the uh, Enlist Duo available, uh, which is a blend of 2,4-D and glyphosate, applied over top of corn, and then in 2015 applied over top of soybeans. Like I said, some interesting uh, technology coming in. Just a couple last few comments on small grains. Uh, as you know, Harmony Extra has the lion's share of the market. Uh, it, uh, it's a broadleaf product. Of course, we're seeing the shift to the Italian rye grasses and the blue grasses. Uh, but what about resistance issues? Uh, let's talk about herbicide families, when you're putting Harmony out, when you're putting Harmony Extra out, when you're putting Osprey out, when you're putting Power Flex out, it's all the same chemistry. It's like putting atrazine out one year and Princep the next year. It's triazines. These things are, are sulfonylureas or ALS products. Chickweed, I mentioned this last year, is, a, is a probably ubiquitous in most of your small grain fields. Uh, this chickweed was sprayed not once, not twice, three times with Harmony Extra. The more Harmony we put on it, the greener it got. What can you do? A couple things. We still have the old standbys like 2,4-D. We've got Banville. However, when you look at Harmony and Harmony Extra, you've got a wide window of application. Um, Harmony and Harmony Extra, two-leaf, but before flag leaf. Wide window. But once you start putting that 2,4-D and Banville in there, we're talking four to eight inches high, after tillering, but before joining. See this right in here? That can be at about a 10-day time span. Not this months and months window, but a 10-day time span. So what else can we do? As I said, we've got pockets of ALS-resistant winter annuals, specifically common chickweed. We've got one product out there called Star Rain Ultra. I'm not sure about the recrop. I, I say 120 days. It might be shorter at this point in time. Uh, and Mark, I don't know. Do you have any Axial Star out here? There's a little bit of them available, yes. Okay. If, if you're not familiar with Axial Star, it's a blend of Axial, basically here for your, your Italian ryegrass, as well as Star Rain for your, your resistant chickweed. So like I said, we do have some tools, some opportunities. Oh uh, yeah, I actually have a, some plot work up in the Denton area on some of this resistant chickweed. I've tried a whole lot of stuff. Uh, and outside of Starine Ultra, that's the only thing that's working to date. All right, 
We've got a couple minutes left for questions. I do want to point out this thing is online. Those of you that are computer savvy, uh, www.agnr.umd.edu. You get into extension, you get into publications, and then you'll find extension bulletin 237. All the stuff I mentioned, all, a lot of the stuff that Arv's going to mention uh, is updated. It's on that website. Jenny, I've got maybe two or three minutes for questions. I want to keep things on, on time. Got to go watch my grandson. No, I, I did that yesterday. <laughs> Lou. Yes. Good question. Is Cadet good by itself on Morning Glory? Cadet is a great product by itself on Morning Glory. Add a little sticker to it. Uh, and once again, if you want to use it with glyphosate, you can. If you want to use it with Liberty, you can. If you want to use it alone, you can, but add a sticker to it. Good question. Mark. Yeah, the question was, if you've got Roundup Ready volunteer corn coming in Roundup Ready corn, is that correct? Yes, sir. <laughs> you got a big hoe? <laughs> <laughs> a couple things. Um, you know, the best thing I could advise is try to get that volunteer up and running, okay? Get the volunteer up and running before you plant, then take care of that the existing stand. Uh, select. You got to wait a couple weeks before you can come back with and plant your Roundup Ready corn. Uh, Send core will actually work, which will allow you to come back. Uh, we've also looked at, uh, believe it or not, uh, atrazine and oil sometimes works, uh, depending upon rate. But like I said, select would probably be a product of choice. But once again, you're going to have to get that volunteer corn up and running. Hit it, give it, you know, 10 days or so, and then plant your regular crop. But that's that's going to be a tough one, Mark. That'll be a tough one. Anything else? Questions, comments? And, and like I said, if you guys, any of you people think you've got Palmer amaranth or the, or the water hemp uh, and you want to get some test plots out, let Jenny know. She'll get hold of me. And uh, like I said, I'm not looking for a big piece of ground, quarter of an acre, get in there, blow some stuff out pre emergence after you plant. The, the pigweeds get up, we're going to blow some stuff out there post emergence. And uh, if we get that going, Jenny, you know what? what? I'll present it here next year. Oh, you definitely, I got to find somebody. <laughs> I have a, okay, I have a goal. I can work on that. All Thank right. you, Ron. You'll be around? For a little bit. Okay, good. Thank you, Ron, very much. Yep. We appreciate you coming over. I have to tell you that, you know, most of you know I have a new grandchild, too. Born in August, and I have to tell you it's the best thing, best thing in the world. Um, my sons are probably first on my list. My grandson has definitely gone um, to number one, so we have lots of fun. Uh, certainly look at your, your, uh, your agenda on the back as a sponsor list. We're going to hear from a couple sponsors. Uh, how about if we, Mark, you want to talk first? Mark from Syngenta? It's business, which I'm a, I'm a survivor like a few folks around here. So I do appreciate your, your business if you've been using my products whether on corn, wheat, soybeans, or anything like that. I do appreciate your, uh, your business. Talk to your dealer if you have any questions. They can get to back to me if anything's a little tougher that they may not be able to handle. The one thing I do want to stress real quick is safety, guys. Uh, you know, as our equipment gets bigger, bigger combines, bigger planters, bigger tractors, there's a lot of issues around this equipment power lines. We had a person in our com company who lost her father and her brother-in-law last year because he swung an auger into a power line, didn't realize he had done it, stepped off the combine, was killed instantly. His, his son-in-law didn't know what happened, saw him sitting, you know, laying on the ground, walked up to him and killed him too. This was in New Jersey. So as this equipment gets bigger, guys, as we're going out, we're going to get real busy in our, in our yearly work here, Keep safety in mind, especially around these power lines. The other thing is, as, as you're getting more into irrigation, you know, if you've got irrigation, it's got an electric motor down in the bottom. A lot of guys, when we have an electrical storm, will go shut that center pivot off because it can go hit your, hit your tower and go down and burn your, your motor out, your electric motor. 
You can get electrocuted doing that too. So be careful around these thunderstorms. When you go out to uh, shut your motor off, make sure you get out there before that thunderstorm's on top of you because it, it, that, can, that can severely hurt you quickly. So that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for your support. Uh, Greg Holland from Helena. Greg, you want to say something? I will while Greg's coming up. Um, MDA is working on a sensitive crop locator. Um, Ryan was talking a little bit about, you know, we've got grapes, we've got some tomatoes. So they're working on anybody that has grapes or tomatoes, any sensitive crop. You can report that to MDA. And before you go out and spray, they're going to work on that. You can pull up your map where you're going to spray and if there's, you know, grapes or some other... Um, type of plant. It won't, it's not for gardens. You know, this is just for ag uh, producers. So there'll be some more information coming out about that. So Greg? I'd just like to thank everybody for uh, their support for me and for Helena and uh, look forward to a new year. Uh, one thing I'd just like to stress is the EPA has been uh, kind enough to put a lot of new regulations on bulk handling and uh, it's going to be a a little bit of a pain. Everybody's going to get used to it. Um, the best thing to do, whether you're buying products from Helena or CPS or whoever, just try to deal with them and find out what's all involved because uh, little things as much as seals on on bulk tanks, I mean, if we got inspected or caught, I mean, it, it means fines for us and then triple rinsing bulk uh, shuttles and sending the rinse aid away and then having a farmer or a professional applicator apply that rinse aid to a field, there's going to be a lot of paperwork involved and, and probably a lot of fines. And it's just another, another uh, thing that we have to look forward to. So I just, you know, like to mention that to everybody that, you know, if they could work with us as much as they can, we'd appreciate it too. So thanks. Thanks, Greg. We have lots of things to look forward to, don't we? That's for sure. Uh, Kevin Dean's here with BASF. Kevin, you want to come up? While Kevin's coming up, there is a Senate bill, um, 888, that's been introduced, and it's to do with pesticides. And they, uh, in this bill, they want each one of you, if you have a private applicator's license, to have a credit, not a credit check, background check. So uh, call your legislators. We don't need to be paying another... And they want MDA to administer this. And so, you know, a background check, 150 to probably $300 to have a background check. So certainly something um, we don't need. And I don't imagine MDA has the staff to do that um, as well. Ed Crow does a good job with his uh, group up there. So just wanted to let you know that. Kevin? Thank you. Uh, would also like to... Uh, express my appreciation for your uh, use of BASF chemistry in the past and uh, hopefully you've had some great results with it. Uh, Ron made a couple comments today about some new things that we had brought to the market this past year and we've got coming both this year and next so we're excited about our new uh, products that uh, give you some new tools here with some of the new problems we're seeing with resistance. Uh, we've got a couple new fungicides that are available in terms of the uh, headline amp and, and some uh, carumba. Uh, so with that, just uh, looking forward to continue to bring some new things to you and uh, hopefully help you to continue to be profitable in your operations. Thank you.